Hi everyone, welcome to Plow Academy. I hope you found this video helpful. If so, I'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel, like this video, share it with your friends and leave a positive comment. Your support and encouragement motivate me to create more great videos. I divide the topics in Unit 1, Mechanics and Materials, as follows, like this. And all the topics are covered by following the syllabus of the Physics International A-Level for EDEXL, as shown here. In this video, I've covered all of Topic 2, Materials, focusing on the solids. We have already seen how forces change the motion of bodies, specifically their speed and acceleration, they can also change the shape of bodies. Forces in opposite directions will tend to stretch or compress a body. If two forces tend to stretch a body they are described as tensile forces, as shown. If they tend to compress a body they are known as compressive forces, as shown. Hooke's law states that the extension of the spring, string or wire is directly proportional to the applied force, or load. So, we can write the equation as F equals Kx, where F is force in newtons, K is the spring constant of stiffness in newtons per meter, and X is the extension, or compression in meters. An experiment can be set up to investigate the relationship between the extension of a spring and the applied force, as shown in the diagram. We then plot a graph of the load force against the extension as shown. The section of the graph between O and A is a straight line passing through the origin. This indicates that the spring obeys Hooke's law within this region. Point A is called the limit of proportionality. This is the point beyond which the spring no longer obeys Hooke's law and begins to stretch more for each increase in the load force. Point B is called the elastic limit. If the spring is stretched beyond its elastic limit, it will not return to its original length when the load is removed. If the load is removed at B, like this, producing a permanent extension OD, between points A and C, the spring does not obey Hooke's law. Combination of the spring constant K. Springs in series. Consider two springs connected in series, as shown. Let the spring constants of the individual springs be K1 and K2. A load of weight W is hung from the bottom of the combined spring system. This weight exerts the same force W on both springs. Therefore, the total force on the system is also W. And F1 equals F2 equals W. The force W causes each spring to extend, spring 1 by x1 and spring 2 by x2. The total extension xt of the system is the sum of these individual extension, xt equals x1 plus x2. From Hooke's law F equals kx, we cancel rearrange the equation to express extension as x equals F over x. Substituting xt equals w over kt x1 equals f1 over k1, and x2 equals f2 over k2. Where kt is the total spring constant. We can cancel out w, f1 and f2, because they are equal. So, total spring constant kt in series is 1 over kt equals 1 over k1 plus 1 over k2. Springs in parallel. Now consider two springs connected in parallel, as shown. Again, let their spring constants be K1 and K2. A load of weight W is hung from the combined spring system. In this configuration, the load W is shared between the two springs. Therefore, W equals F1 plus F2. Because the springs are connected in parallel, they both experience the same extension XT. So total extension x t equals x1 equals x2. From Hooke's law f equals kx. Substituting w equals k t x t, f1 equals k1 x1 and f2 equals k2 x2. We can cancel out x t, x1 and x2, because they are equal. Therefore, 
the total spring constant kt equals k1 plus k2. This approach can be applied to combinations of three or more springs. Stress is the force F per unit area A. Its unit is newtons per meter or pascal. So, we can write the equation as sigma equals F divided by A, where sigma is stress in pascals, F is the force in newtons and A is the cross-section area in square meters. Strain is the ratio of the extension X to the original length L0. It has no unit. So, we can write the equation as epsilon equals x divided by L0, where epsilon is strain, x is the extension in meters, and L0 is the original length in meters. Young modulus is the ratio of stress to strain. Its unit is newtons per square meter or pascal. So, we can write the equation as E equals sigma divided by epsilon, where E is young modulus, Sigma is the stress in pascals and epsilon is the strain has no unit. So, the Young modulus E equals F over A divided by X over L0. Where F over A is stress and X over L0 is strain. We can rearrange the equation as F L0 divided by AX. We can use this equation to find the Young modulus E when we know the applied force F the original length L0, the cross-section area A and the extension X. The Young's modulus is a specific value for each material, meaning that the same material has the same Young's modulus. The stiffness, K, varies for identical materials with different lengths and cross-sectional areas. Experiment to determine the Young modulus of the metal wire. The apparatus was set up as shown in the diagram. A thin, long metal wire should be used. A longer and thinner wire extends more for a given force, which reduces the percentage uncertainty in measurements. First, determine the cross-sectional area of the wire. Use a micrometer to measure the wire's diameter at several points and calculate the average. Assuming a circular cross-section, so we can use the formula A equals pi square D over 4 to calculate the area. Clamp the wire to the bench as shown in the diagram, allowing weights to be hung from one end. Start with the smallest weight necessary to straighten the wire. This weight should not be included in the final calculations. Measure the initial, unstretched length, L, between the fixed end of the wire and the marker. Increasing the weight stretches the wire, causing the marker to move. Measure the stretched length, L, between the fixed end of the wire and the marker. Calculate the extension, X, as the difference between the stretched length, L, and the unstretched length, L0. Increase the weight in equal steps, as 100 G intervals, at least 5 different masses, recording the marker reading and calculating the extension each time. Use these results to calculate the stress, and strain of the wire and plot a stress strain graph. The gradient of this graph represents the Young's modulus. Safety precautions. If you are doing this experiment, wear safety goggles. If the wire snaps, it could get very messy. Elastic deformation. A wire, spring or rubber band that stretches elastically will return to its original length once the stretching force is removed. The graph of the applied force against the extension of the wire or spring or rubber is shown. When it is loading, the graph shows like this. When it is unloading, the graph shows like this. This shows that the, the material returned to the original length when the load is removed. This is called elastic deformation. Plastic deformation. A wire, spring or rubber band that stretches plastically will not return to its original length once the stretching force is removed. The graph of the applied force against the extension of the wire or spring or rubber is shown. When it is loading, the graph shows like this. When it is unloading, the graph shows like this. This shows that the, the material does not return to the original length when the load is removed. 
It produces the permanent extension OD. This is called plastic deformation. Elastic potential energy or strain energy. The graph of the applied force against the extension is shown. The gradient of the graph is the force in newtons divided by the extension in meters. This is because the force is represented on the vertical axis, delta y, and the extension on the horizontal axis, delta x. So, the gradient of the graph represents the spring constant, or stiffness k. The area under graph is form into triangle shape. The base of this triangle represents the extension, x, and the height represents the force, f. The area of a triangle is given by half the base multiplied by the height. So, the area under the graph is half of the force times the extension. The force times the extension represents the work done by the force to extend, or compress, the material. The factor 1 half arises because the force increases linearly from 0 to F during the extension, so, the average force is F over 2. So, the area under the graph equals the work done by the force, which is equal to the elastic potential energy, or strain energy, stored within the material, provided the material remains within its limit of proportionality. We substitute F equals Kx, like this. We simplify the equation as half k square of x. Therefore, the strain energy EP equals half of Fx, or half of k square of x. Where EP is the strain or elastic potential energy in joule, F is force in newtons, x is the extension or compression in meters and k is the spring constant of stiffness in newtons per meter. Elastic potential energy, or strain energy per unit volume. The graph of the stress against the strain is shown. The gradient of the graph is the stress in newtons per square meter divided by the strain. This is because the stress is represented on the vertical axis, delta y, and the strain on the horizontal axis, delta x. So, the gradient of the graph represents the Young modulus E. The area under graph is form into triangle shape. The base of this triangle represents the strain, and the height represents the stress. The area of a triangle is given by half the base multiplied by the height. The area under graph equals half of stress times strain. Substituting stress equals F over A, and strain equals X over L0. We simplify the equation like this. One half of Fx is the elastic potential energy, or strain energy. AL0 is the volume V. So the area under graph is the elastic potential, or strain energy per unit volume. There are four important points on a stress strain graph. In the exam, you could be given a stress strain graph and asked to interpret it. The most stress strain graphs share four important points as shown in the diagram. Before point P, the graph is a straight line through the origin. This shows that the material is obeying Hooke's law. Point P is the limit of proportionality. After this, the graph is no longer a straight line, but starts to bend. At this point, the material stops obeying Hooke's law, but would still return to its original shape if the stress was removed. Point E is the elastic limit. At this point, the material starts to behave plastically. From point E onwards, the material would no longer return to its original shape once the stress was removed. Point Y is the yield point. Here the material suddenly starts to stretch without any extra load. The yield point, or yield stress, is the stress at which a large amount of plastic deformation takes place with a constant or reduced load. Point B is the breaking point. As the stress is to start to pull the atoms apart from one another, Eventually, the stress becomes so great that atoms separate completely and the material breaks. The stress at which this occurs is called the breaking stress. Exam style question 1. A student carried out an experiment to determine the young modulus of copper. She used the apparatus below to observe the position of a marker as a copper wire extended under increasing applied loads. A. 
Describe how the diameter of the wire should have been determined. Use a micrometer to measure the wire's diameter at several orientation points along the wire, and then calculate the average of the diameter. You will get three marks from Use a micrometer screw or digital vernier caliper. Measure at the different orientations positions. Calculate the average of the diameter. B. The student calculated the extension of the copper wire for each applied load. She then plotted a graph of load against extension. Determine a value for the young modulus of copper. Original length of copper wire equals 2.4 meters. Diameter of copper wire equals 2.3 times 10 power negative 4 meters. The young modulus E is F over A divided by X over L, where F over A is the stress, and X over L is strain. We change the division to multiple like this, where F over X is the gradient. So, the young modulus is the gradient multiplied by L over A, where L is the original length and A is the cross-section area. We draw the triangle on the straight line in the graph, like this. Delta X is equal 2.4 times 10 power negative 3 meters. Delta I is equal 5.4 newtons. So, the gradient is the delta x divided by delta y, which is 5.4 divided by 2.4 times 10 power negative 3. So, the gradient is 2050 newtons per meter. We calculate the cross section area A is pi d squared over 4. Substituting diameter d is 2.3 times 10 power negative 4 meters. So, the cross section A is 4.1547 times 10 power negative 8 meters. Substituting the gradient is 2250, L is 2.4. And A is 4.1547 times 10 power negative 8, like this. We get the young modulus E is 1.3 times 10 power 11 pascals for two significant figures. You will get four marks from. Use the equation of area A is pi square of half of diameter D. Calculate the gradient of linear section up to 3 times 10 power negative 3 meters and 6.8 newtons. Use the equation of stress and strain, or the equation of young modulus. Correct a value of Young modulus in range of 1.2 to 1.3 times 10 power 11 pascals. Exam style question 2. A steadily increasing tensile force was applied to a sample of a titanium alloy. The sample had an original length of 40 centimetres and diameter of 5.05 millimetres. A. State a suitable measuring instrument to measure the diameter of the sample. We use a micrometer screw to measure the diameter. You will get one marks from Use micrometer screw or digital vernier caliper. B. The graph shows how stress varied with strain for the sample. 1. Determine the young modulus of the sample. The young modulus is the stress divided by strain. So the gradient of stress-strain graph is the young modulus. We draw the triangle on the straight line section in the graph, like this. Delta X is 0.005. Delta Y is 600 times 10 power 6 pascals. So, the gradient is 600 times 10 power 6 divided by 0.005. We get the young modulus is 1.2 times 10 power 11 pascals. You will get three marks from Attempt to calculate the gradient of the graph. Use the initial linear section on the graph to calculate the gradient. Answer in range between 1.15 to 1.25 times 10 power 11 pascals. 2. The sample broke at point B. Determine the force required to break the sample. The breaking stress on the graph is 1,280 megapascals, which is 1,280 times 10 power 6 pascals. The stress is force F over cross-section area A, so force is stress multiplied by cross-section area. The cross-section area A is pi d squared over 4. Substituting the diameter d is 5.05 times 10 power negative 3 meters. Then the cross-section area A is 2.0029 times 10 power negative 5 square meters. Substituting the stress and area like this, we get the stress 2.6 times 10 power 4 pascals for two significant figures. You will get four marks from breaking stress read from the graph. Use the equation A equals pi R squared over 4. Use the equation of stress equals F over A. Correct the force is 2.6 times 10 power 4 newtons. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, I would be grateful if you would subscribe, share, like and leave a positive comment. Your support will encourage me to create more content. Thank you.